Hi, today we are going to derive the formula to calculate amount of compound interest. So, what is the difference between simple interest and compound interest? Yes, in simple interest, interest is always calculated on the principal amount. Suppose if you have taken P amount as loan for the period of T terms, these terms can be yearly or six monthly this you call half yearly also right I'm writing in short form or this can be three monthly or quarterly right so T is actually number of terms this is called time and the rate of interest is R percent per term right R percent per terms means for every hundred rupees or dollars you have to pay R rupees or dollars every term simple interest is calculated terms wise right so in the case of simple interest always you calculate interest on principal and the formula for simple interest was P that is principal multiplied by R that is the rate of interest per term multiplied by number of terms and divided by 100 this divided by 100 will be there because this rate of interest is in percent right so this is the formula where interest is always calculated on principal for the first term this T will be 1 and the interest will be P multiplied by R by 100 right and if you calculate for two terms you have to multiply it by 2 this T will become 2 and you have to multiply it by 2 and the interest will become double right and if you are calculating for the three terms this number of terms will become 3 and the amount which you pay for interest will be three times right so this was the simple interest where every time or in the end of each term you calculate the interest on the principal amount itself and in the case of compound interest what we do for the first term we calculate the simple interest on the principal amount and while calculating the interest for the second term what we do this principal amount gets increased by the simple interest of the first term right so for the second term the principal will become the original principal amount plus the simple interest of the first term so while calculating the interest for the second term we have to change the principal amount to the original principal amount plus the interest of the first term and what we do for the third term yes and if we are calculating the interest for the third term we have to add the interest of the second term to the principal of the second term which is the principal of the first term plus the interest of the first term and this will become the principal for the third term right so this is the difference between simple interest and compound interest in compound interest we also consider the interest earned in previous terms right so now let's try to find the formula to calculate the compound interest so before we start discussing about compound interest let me note all these important things over here and then we will discuss about compound interest so we had P which is principal then we have T which was the number of terms or sometimes we call it time also and then we had R which was rate of interest and it was in percent right and then we had formula for simple interest this was principal multiplied by R multiplied by time divided by 100 right and as we have discussed for compound interest from the second term onwards we calculate the interest on interest also so we had one more term which was a and we were calling it amount amount is the amount payable at the end of term so if we talk about first term what will be the amount payable at the end of first term it will be principal plus interest right and this amount payable at the end of first term becomes the principal amount for the second term isn't it and what was this this was actually P 
and interest for the first term was P plus R by 100. Right? Yes. And from these two terms, if I take P common, this can be written as 1 plus R by 100. P multiplied by 1 plus R by 100. Right? So, this is the amount at the end of first year or the first term. So, if we talk about the second term, what will happen for the second term? Yes, for the second term, this amount or the P plus I, I is the interest of the first term, this total becomes the principal. Right? And we calculate interest over this. So, for second term, the simple interest will be or the interest for this will be this is this will become new principal so P multiplied by 1 plus R by 100 right this will become principal and interest over this will be multiplied by R by 100 and again here also we are calculating for one term only the second term right so t will be 1 and any number multiplied by 1 is the number itself. So we can omit this t from here. So this will be the interest at the end of second term. Let's call this as interest 2 because this is the interest for the second term. And if we rewrite this expression in little simple form, it will become p multiplied by 1 plus r by 100 multiplied by R by 100 right this is the interest for the second term right yes it looks little ugly but let's bear with this for the time being and now if I calculate the amount payable at the end of second term it will be a2 this will be the principal for the second term and what was the principal for the second term this was the principal for the second term right plus interest which is this much. So, principal for the second term was P multiplied by 1 plus R by 100 and the interest for the second term was this much which is P multiplied by 1 plus R by 100 multiplied by R by 100. Right? And if we simplify it and take these two terms common this and this which is common in both the expressions we will get P multiplied by 1 plus R by 100 right and from here we will have 1 left behind plus this R by 100 right so this will be 1 plus R by 100 Oh, and this can actually be written as P multiplied by 1 plus R by 100 square. Isn't it? Yes, we have this appearing twice in multiplication, right? So, we can write it as 1 plus R by 100 to the power 2. So, what is the amount at the end of second term? The amount at the end of second term is A2 and this was equal to P multiplied by 1 plus R by 100 square. Right? Can you notice one thing? When we are calculating for the amount at the end of second term, we are getting P multiplied by this fraction to the power 2. Right? Isn't it? Yes. So, let's see what happens if we calculate the amount payable at the end of third term and if that can also be reduced into this format we can we can reach to a conclusion and we can write a formula for calculating the amount so this is the amount at the end of second term right so this will become the principal for the third term and if we calculate the simple interest for the third term simple interest will be let me call it I3. It will be principal which is the amount payable at the end of second term which is P multiplied by 1 
plus r by 100 whole square right and the rate of interest again here is r percent that is r by 100 right and the term we are again we are calculating for the one term that is the third term so interest over here will be this much p multiplied by 1 plus r by 100 whole square that is the amount payable at the end of second term multiplied by r by 100 because the rate of interest is in percent so we write r by 100 and if we calculate the amount payable at the end of term 3 let's call it as a3 it will be the principal for the term 3 which is p multiplied by 1 plus r by 100 whole square so it will be p multiplied by 1 plus r by 100 whole square plus this interest right interest over here is p multiplied by 1 plus r by 100 whole square multiplied by r by 100 right yes and again from these two terms we can take this p multiplied by 1 plus r by 100 whole square common so if i take this common it will be p multiplied by 1 plus r by 100 whole square common and inside the bracket from here we will be left with 1 plus this r by 100 right and this is nothing but the term written inside the bracket right so this becomes p multiplied by 1 plus r by 100 whole cube and what is this this is the amount at the end of third term right so if you see carefully here while calculating the amount at the end of second term we are getting p multiplied by 1 plus r by 100 to the power 2 right and here after calculating the amount payable at the end of third term we are getting p multiplied by 1 plus r by 100 to the power 3 this is at the end of the third term and this is at the end of the second term right and I think if we continue like this to calculate the amount payable at the end of t terms the amount will be p multiplied by 1 plus r by 100 to the power t right so this is the formula for calculating the amount in the case of compound interest and if you want to calculate the compound interest itself what we have to do you have to calculate the amount using this formula and subtract the principal amount and this way you will get the compound interest payable at the end of t terms right so this is the formula for compound interest and this is the formula to calculate the amount payable at the end of t terms when the interest calculated is compound interest.